Hello everyone, welcome to the first Planetarium Lab lesson. Weird to be doing it in this way, but we do what we have to do. I hope this finds you all very safe and well. So, for the first lesson, I wanted to just use it as a review for two reasons. Uh, one, there's some information here that's going to be reused in our next lesson, but more so is for the first lesson online, I didn't want you both learning a new thing and a new method. So I just really want this to be focused on getting used to this new way of learning, new way of uh, for me to present things, and uh, hopefully we'll get through this together. So we're gonna start with an evening sky, so pretend you're back in the planetarium, and over here on the right is the dome above you. Uh, now it is marked south is here on the bottom of the screen. That represents the front of the planetarium. So everything on the bottom of the screen would be in front of you as you sit. Behind you is the top of the screen. And of course, then right and left would be west and east. So hopefully you're looking at all those dots above you in the dome and the screen right there. And you're noticing or recognizing some shapes that you should recognize, especially some of our iconic shapes like Leo. Orion and Ursa Major. Uh, all three of those are in our sky tonight and I hope you've been viewing those on a daily basis being uh, it's been beautiful weather. Now also wanted to point out that that big bright light uh, big bright dot in the western sky has been the bright planet of Venus been with us several months now uh, will be with us still a few more weeks beautiful planet take a look for her this evening as well. But with that, I want to get into the review of telling date with the stars. So we learned this, that at midnight of any night, if we looked up at the stars, we should be able to tell the date. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. Use this as a review. I'm going to go ahead and go to midnight. You can see I fast forwarded the sky, rotated the Earth, and we are now at midnight on April 11th. You'll still recognize Leo, Orion has set, and maybe even taken a look at Scorpius that is now rising in the southeast sky next to our moon on Wednesday night. My question to you, can you prove this sky is an April 11th sky? Now, of course, the computer's telling you that it's an April 11th sky, so you know it is. But I want you to think of the techniques that we've gone over. Could you prove this is an April 11th sky? Now let's remind ourselves of how this is done. First thing we need to remember is that our four iconic constellations each play a part in this, row, uh, in this job. Leo the lion represents spring, and its tail crosses the midline on March 21st at midnight. As we advance through the year, we remember that Scorpius' stinger crosses the midline on June 21st. Scorpius' middle of the square crosses on September 21st, the first day of fall. And Orion's midpoint crosses on December 21st, the first day of winter. So each of our four iconic constellations of Leo, Scorpius, Pegasus, and Orion each play their part. Now, the one important for our question at hand, of course, is the constellation of Leo. Back to April 11th, the day in question, how do we measure and make sure that Leo is, in fact, positioned for April 11th at midnight? Well, you, as you remember, we used our hands. I taught you that the rock and roll hands in the real sky is 15 degrees in the sky. Now, in the planetarium dome, we changed this to a peace sign because... The planetarium dome is smaller version of the real sky. Here, I don't know what size of monitor or screen you're looking at right now. So you're going to have to choose your own. You're going to have to make up your own ruler to fit between these two fingers. You need to be able to measure those 15 degrees. For me and my monitor, this is about my thumb width to make 15 degrees. But maybe for you, it's only a pinky. Maybe you got a smaller screen. You're doing this on your phone or something. Whatever it is, you guys need to know the measurements between those two points, whatever it happens to be for you. So we know that this measurement's 15 degrees, and we can see that Leo's midpoint, a midpoint of its tail, is actually beyond the first hand, and about a third of the way into the second hand. 
which means we could estimate about a third of it is about five degrees in. So 15 and five, that's 20 degrees total. Well, if we remember, the sky moves one degree a day. Why? We'll go and we'll get into in a second. But we do remember that one degree in one day is what the stars move. And so since we have 20 degrees that Leo has crossed the line, that means it's 20 days beyond March 21st. So a quick look at a calendar here, and you'll realize there's March 21st. 10 days after that is March 31st. 10 days after that is actually March 10th. That's not bad, or April 10th. That's not bad at all, because we were trying to show that this sky is actually April 11th. I think we've done it. Remember, we're going to have margin of error even worse than in the planetarium, because this is not the real sky, not the planetarium. Now we're looking at our screens. So to be just that close is still pretty good. Now let's remind ourselves of why this works in the first place, why one degree is approximately one day in our sky. And that has to do, of course, with the orbit of the Earth. As Earth orbits the sun, the stars behind the sun are going to slowly drift through the sky. Now we know it takes 365 days for the Earth to orbit the sun, and it takes 365 days to go 360 degrees. So 360, 365, that's basically very close to one degree a day. So if you see here, if I click one day at a time, you can see how little the Earth orbits every day and how little it shifts the evening sky from night to night. So if we take that and look at the same process, but in the real sky here, you can see every day shifts just a little bit, one degree every day. So we use that knowledge to be able to tell the date. So we're going to end here with a, a, a little uh, quiz, if you will. But I first wanted to introduce to you why I wanted to go back to this lesson to review. And it's because of the measurement. That 15 degree measurement is important to our next lesson because our next lesson is going to be how to tell time using the sun. So knowing how to measure 15 degrees is important to us because the Earth rotates 360 degrees in just 24 hours. Well, a little math tells us that means it does 15 degrees in one hour. So our measurement device becomes useful again, because now in this picture over here, for example, you can see that the sun is one hour past the median line, which means it's 1 p.m., one hour post-meridian. And you can see up here that it is one, one o'clock. Well, you gotta remember that we live in Tulsa. Our noon is actually 23 minutes past the hour, so our 1 p.m. is also gonna be 23 minutes past the hour. But we'll, we'll go over that as well. But we're gonna be definitely using this 15 degree measurement next lesson. Now with that, I want, you, I want a way for you guys to practice, and uh, if you want, you can even uh, email me or text me your answers. I'm going to leave my information below, uh, but I now have four quick little questions. I'm going to keep each one on the screen, maybe five seconds or so here, and uh, you guys can pause it, take as long as you want to answer, go back and look at the lesson, remind yourself how to do it. But here's question one, for example. I want to know, it's the 21st of which month? Remind you, of course, that it is midnight. Here's question two. Here's question three. And here's question four. So feel free to answer if you feel like you want to see if you're right. Go ahead and email me your answers and I'll check to see if you're right. It'd be good to hear from you either way. But until next time, when we go over the how to tell time with the sun, this is Mr. Z. Have a good one, guys.